Hey guys, Dre Aven here with volleyball superstar, supermodel legend, Gabby Ree. She dazzled audiences with her volleyball skills and also her photo shoot modeling skills. Fans around the world are so in love with her. And now she's doing really big things as an influencer, fitness, lifestyle, motivator, podcast host. So I'm super excited that she invited me over to her house today. Beautiful house in Malibu. So Gabby, what's up? Hi, thank you for coming and waiting and, yeah. you know. It was good. I love I'm so comfortable here in your house. I could have waited yeah, another hour, okay. but thank you so much for, for having us, Gabby. And I want to start at the beginning, the genesis of everything that you've done. You were born here in Southern California. That's where we are now. Mm -hmm. Then you moved to Florida and in 11th grade, you were introduced to volleyball. So at that point, when did you know that this was your calling? Like this was going to be the thing that you were going to rise in the sport that was going to take you to the top. Well, I had a roundabout way. I, I never lived actually in California that long. Okay. I, yeah, you were born here, but you weren't here that long. Right. And then yeah. um, my parents were not really together that long. And then I spent a few years not with my parents living in New York. And then at seven, I was actually raised in the Caribbean. Beautiful. Yeah. It was love, very beautiful. But, I love it there. <laughs> but the, the whole thing about the Caribbean is, is organized athletics was not that popular. Mm -hmm. But I was quite tall. I was six feet at 12 and then six six three so then I was moved to Florida my junior year yep junior year in high school and that's when they were like oh you should really take that more seriously mm -hmm. and and quite frankly I it wasn't until my senior year that I started getting um, athletic offers scholarship offers mm -hmm. for basketball and volleyball that it even dawned on me that it was something that I would be able to do that the next level right yeah and so then I decided it was a really good opportunity to go to university and and so I went to Florida State yep and um, and and started i would say i kind of learned how to really play in college right you it's know, a different was, level as a as a college athlete myself yeah. it's a totally different level yeah and i felt in a way like i was kind of winging it here and there and, you know and then you're sort of learning on the fly but right yeah I, I would say that i was a person who fell into the sports and i also think that that's why i played for so long because mm -hmm. I didn't get burnt out. I really loved it. And I was always learning. And so it even made, as you progressed, right? Yeah. And so it really yeah. made it a like, fun. I think that's what's so fun about sports is when you, you think about how much better you keep getting. Mm -hmm. That's part of what's exciting. Right. And so right. I really, I think I really enjoyed that part of it. Right. And then we were talking about just high school starting volleyball. You also started modeling at that point as well. And then there's this parallel of just doing both two different lanes at a high level ascending and just really becoming a superstar in both what was the key to that they're two totally different things gritty athlete glamorous supermodel how did you balance the two the way that you were able to i was always so impressed with that when i was looking up to you oh thank you i think yeah. uh sometimes it's better not to know certain things mm -hmm. and you just when you're in them so for example i even though i was on scholarship i was very much interested in being totally independent from my family um just financially made, or just yeah. emotionally oh or, yeah okay. well i was already sort of independent i just was looking for more security and so i took the job in fashion and i have to say what was really helpful is my coach from college so after my freshman year of college i went to new york um, during summer because the NCAA rules, yep. you know how that is. Yep, yep, yep. And so I went there to see what it would be like. And because so it was a risk, but not really a big risk. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like giving up anything to do right, it. You're like, let's just take the chance. Yeah. And so yeah. I, I was fortunate. I started working and, you know, making money. So after my sophomore season, I gave up my scholarship mm -hmm. um, just because the NCAA rulings. And my coach was the one who said, OK, well, I'll make you a deal. Because I think she knew I was sort of on my own. And mm -hmm. she was like, when you're there, you're there. And when you're here, you're here. So I would go. I would get out of spring training in January. Um, where my So my team was at school spring training, spring training. And I was living in New York. Right. Trying and to then, capitalize on that. Yeah. yeah. And then in May and June, I would go back to school and take enough credits to be eligible. to. So I took mm -hmm. all my classes in summer school. Then I would go back. But then when I came back in August um, for two-a-days, I was that was it till December. Right. So I was there at Florida State in Tallahassee. So you made sure that you didn't miss any time. Like you were already caught up and you could, that's how you were able to juggle yeah. both. So you didn't fall behind on either side. Right. You couldn't, NCAAs, you can't fall behind right. on your classes. Otherwise you can't compete. Right. You got to keep a certain. The only thing I sort of got out of was spring training, you know, the, and, and so, so that was a little bit tricky because I was living in New York and I was trying to train on my own, but I was working. I used mm -hmm. to say I'd like go to work, come home, wash all my makeup off and get to and the gym. And then get into like the athlete mode. Going yeah. to the gym and, and things like that. So 
I think my coach really was helpful in helping me about, you know, sort of do both things. Cause she didn't, I think if she had said, you better choose, I probably would have picked volleyball mm -hmm. one because it was fun and I really liked it, but also it was a sure thing Right. where, you know, modeling yep. is not always a, a sure it's thing. It's definitely not. Right. So yeah. I think I, and it was, I had good, good luck, good fortune. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was just having the ability to be like, focusing on what I needed to focus at that time. At that particular Correct. moment in time and yep. not try to get too overwhelmed because once you start thinking of like, oh, I've got, you have to zone in in the moment and that's how you were able to rise so well on both sides. I want to ask you this twofold, um, just basically about the modeling side first and then we'll go to the volleyball side. What was your most impactful moment or one of your most impactful moments as a model? I know there's probably tons, but let's just spotlight one moment that was super impactful in your mind on the modeling side, then we'll go to volleyball. You know, I, I have to say, I, I'm very, I have a very utilitarian yeah. attitude towards a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so for me, modeling, um, I was really fortunate to work with really good people. But I, there is something weird about like you're walking down the street and you're on a cover of a magazine, <laughs> yeah. especially in the days when those were ma magazines. And it wasn't so digital, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So you could, you know, and I lived in New York, so you have all those newsstands and stuff. And then you sort of thought, oh, that's weird, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> kind of cool. But the funny thing is, you know, it's there and then it's gone in 30 days. Right. So I even remember them thinking it's good, but don't don't get into the caught up into that right. because it'll level be, head it'll be gone right in 30 days it's gonna point to some an, another one will be up so that was sort of interesting i think right i mean listen when it, when you see your first pictures probably in a magazine yeah i think that the, that's an, a, a representation of like oh wait a second i take these pictures in the studio over here and then they end up in this place over here where right. other people will see, see them. them right yeah no i've had i've done modeling as well and i just seeing the covers and the hard work that goes into it and then seeing it out there. It's almost like an out of body. It's like, that's really me. Cause I was a tomboy as well. So to yeah. get all dolled up and be on, I never got to the level that you got to, but it's just definitely like a different experience. It's kind of an out of body experience. It's like, yeah. that's me. Wow. And it's not it's crazy, you, right? Like, yeah. The joke is you could take yourself in that moment and take the picture up and it's, you know, it's airbrushed or retouched right, or the right. lighting or whatever. And Angles. So I, yeah. Yes. But, so I think that was another really valuable thing was like, oh yeah, no, this, this, <laughs> the picture of me isn't me. So right. how can any of this be, you know? Right. I think it's amazing how self-deprecating you are. I mean, you've accomplished so much. One of my favorite covers was your L cover. I don't know if you've done more than one L mm -hmm. cover, but the L cover that I know about is definitely one of my favorite oh. covers that you've done. So congratulations on that. Okay. So on Thank the, you. on the volleyball side, what's one of the most impactful moments as a volleyball player in your career? There was probably several, but if we have to narrow it down to one most impactful moment on the volleyball side. You know, I think, you know, we won a four and four beach championship mm -hmm. in the world championships. That was pretty fun for me. But uh, again, I think for me, the fact that I got to you know, go to college on a scholarship. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even really thinking of that. And I certainly wouldn't have been able to go to university if I hadn't had a scholarship. Right. And so I think that that opened my mind in a way that impacted me deeper. So yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. College, you, you know, I, I'm in the, whatever their hall of fame, I've been given other accolades, many others, but mm -hmm. there was something about the, there's an epiphany as a young person where you go, wait a second, this is like something I can do mm -hmm. and that can also, I can, that can impact my life. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's, a, there's all different kinds of athletes. Yeah. And I think that I always said that, like I have fellow volleyball friends that are like, they were groomed to win. Care that was like from birth. Like that Correct. was their whole thing. Like well, you're going to be, or they will like you yeah. can, you will, you should, right. if you want to, whatever. And, and for me, I think what I always said is that volleyball actually sort of, redirected my life and saved my life in a very different way. way. Okay. So what it really meant to me was so much different or bigger than like, Oh, I won, I lost. Right. It really redirected my, my entire life, the trajectory of, of my life. entire life. Right. Like going Wonderful. to Florida state, having that coach, then playing professional, then doing that. It's like, everything happens for a reason. That yeah. was your path that you were meant to travel the way that everything manifested. That was how it was meant to transpire. Yeah. So I think so for, it was that, mm -hmm. and then it led me like learning about, you know, exercise and movement and nutrition and all that. So it's like, it's been ongoing. And, and so I think in some ways, 
uh, mm -hmm. that for me is like the biggest uh, part of it all because mm -hmm. I don't know that I was so groomed for success. I, right. really, I wasn't really. Right, but it came at the time and the way that it manifested was the way that it was supposed to. And yeah. Nike certainly took notice of your glamour and your grit, the athleticism, the beauty, and you became the first female spokesperson for Nike. Mm -hmm. What kind of an honor was that for you? That was just a huge, especially at the time, that was yeah. massive. Yeah, I was... You know, listen, and plus they gave my desi shoe designer was Tinker Hatfield and Tinker has done, you know, the brand Jordan so Jordan and, brand. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's also like setting you up for success. It's like giving, you know, someone that will make you a beautiful product and a beautiful shoe. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I will say this is there's something when you're going through it. First of all, that you're not really aware as aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. You're sort of like, oh, this is good. But well, you're not really. <laughs> You know what I mean? But you're not yeah. really aware. But what you also realize is that there there were some other people right before you that actually because of what they had done and then we came around like myself, and then Mia Ham, Cheryl mm -hmm. Swoops, mm -hmm. we we were right at the right time. With it, yeah. And so I think that that felt like that was part of the deal too. Right. Because you think about it, like Cheryl Miller was right before me, mm -hmm. um, Martina Navratilova. There were mm -hmm. some athletes like right before that. were that, kind of like breaking it, yeah. the ceiling a little bit, a yeah. little bit, a little bit. And then you came through and it was like the timing. It was massive. So I think that you, 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 cause you're inside of it. So, you know, mm -hmm. but I, um, yeah, listen, it's so fun. It's so fun it's when like Tinker flies down and you go to the gym and he goes, what do you need in f footwear? <laughs> Even down to this. And this is how it's we, amazing. How, Cause if it, one thing, you know, the success of Nike, especially f f in footwear is because if literally the athlete goes, I don't want that, they will not do it. Yeah. Right? Because it's supposed to embody what they, what they want. want. Right. And it's, it's real. It's real. But I, I have very big feet. And, um, and I remember <laughs> yeah. saying, okay, I need my shoes to do this and I want to go light cause I'm going to jump. I mean, like in my cross training and things like that. Right. But then I said to Tinker, but when I look down, I want my foot to look smaller. And okay. he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> He's like trying to well, manage no, he, All you have to mind. do is you can put certain lines in that cuts the length of right. the shoe. So it looks smaller when yeah. you're looking down. I'm like, listen, I'm in the gym every day. Mm -hmm. Part of like being able to get it done every day is like look good, feel good kind of thing. Yeah. But I used to say, hey, you know, like if you can make the foot look a little shorter, yeah. go for it. And so he did. But wow. Yeah, it was really. And also customization and the first female uh, black uh, female shoe. So when we were designing oh, shoes, wow. um, I wanted a black shoe because I w often wore men's training shoes. Mm -hmm. And Nike was like, yeah, we don't make um, women's shoes in black colorways. And we were like, Okay. Yeah, but you need to change that. This is yeah. where you make that change. So we did it. So it was, that was fun too because it was more edgy and, and I think per, really represented how girls and women were dressing anyway. Right. But it was like, oh, okay. Right. Well, yeah. that's amazing. And I love how now that you're not playing, you're still such a face that's out there in the influencer world. I mentioned this at the top of the interview. High X training is something that's mm -hmm. out there. You created this. Tell me a little bit more about high X training. Mm -hmm. I see you on Instagram. You're doing uh. your exercises. It looks very intense, but it looks fun. It looks productive. Yeah. Let's break down high X training. Okay. So, so there's, so there's two types of training, right? There's mm -hmm. the one I do with Laird. That's XPT, which Laird's is like, her husband. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, how oh, many sorry. years? I uh, love him. I was talking to him off 20, camera. 25 years. Yeah, so I think he's here. I think he's going to be here to stay. Yes, I think I think we're, we're, <laughs> we're deciding. Yeah, we're deciding. okay. It's like impending right now, it but it looks good. good. The outlook looks uh, good. Three kids later and like, you know. Anyway, yeah, and gorgeous um, family. Uh, X was born out of, I w we lived part-time in Hawaii and they didn't have a gym where we lived. And so I used to tell really? a couple of my friends, well, it's pretty remote. Oh, and okay, so, the place that you guys are, okay. Yeah, and so I'd say to my friends, okay, I'll rent out the community center. It was a little place. And um, I'll bring my dumbbells and kettlebells and stuff and we'll train. Well, it's a small place. And so people, I'd see them at the grocery store and they'd be like, oh, can I come? You're not going to say no to people, right? Yeah. <laughs> so long story short, um, I ended up having, you know, 60 to 80 people in this class, but it was a dollar. I charged everyone a dollar. So they were covered by my insurance. Okay. Because so we have a contract. Okay. Right? Okay, cool. I didn't but what it was is it became a classroom. Okay. So out of that, I tried every which way and pretty much you're at every station for three minutes, every 30 seconds. So you have six mini sets, you switch. So if you have a left side, you do a right, right side. side. So it's, it's cardio, it's weightlifting, it's proprioception and balance. It's everything all in one. And it's different every time I've written mm -hmm. over 1200 workouts. And what, what it was is, yeah, is we had anywhere from oh 15 God. to 18 teams. So there would be teams of four and six people. Mm -hmm. So using my athletic background, 
couple things would happen is you could have men training, but they'd just be on like a guy team. Okay. And they were sort of in their bubble. I could have a bunch of type A ladies and they were all in like a Everyone bubble. Everyone was like separated. And I could have a team of like ladies who are like trying to stay healthy, but they're maybe 60s, 70s and they don't want to just crush everything. And so it had this great thing where everybody could be together. But the other interesting thing was like, I'd have like 16 and 18 year old girls, right? And they'd look across and they'd see the women that are 60 lifting in certain exercises more weight than them. <laughs> so what they learned is, oh, that's what 60 looks like. Mm -hmm. But then what the 60 year old was thinking was, oh, you know what? I'm doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. And so I learned, I got to, and That's I used really to, cool. it was really cool. But also on the days that like, I didn't want to go, if you were my teammate or on my team, I would show up for you. Right. And so oh, what, yeah. what it did, it had built in accountability. Accountability, camaraderie, supporting, yeah. motivating. Yeah. And it's a butt buster. It's definitely an ass buster and it's hard and because it's different, you can keep making gains and progress. Um, and, and always modify every exercise, you know, to harder or to easier you and, um, develop it that way. Yeah. So that was just born out of wanting to do a community service for my community. And I used to say, Hey, it's not a democracy. It's a dictatorship. And like, this is what we're doing. <laughs> right. And so it really gave me a lab to create the curriculum. Wow. That's amazing. And you created that curriculum. You also created the Gabby Reese podcast show, mm -hmm. which I love very insightful, informative, what made you decide to become, to enter the podcast world, the host world? I know you've done a lot of TV mm -hmm. stuff, New York Times bestselling author, now podcast yeah. show. Why add that to the already lengthy Gabby <laughs> Reese resume? I think, you know, Amazing. the number, one of the number one things for me always about interviewing people, because in the mm -hmm. early nineties, I started doing a lot of interviewing of other athletes mm -hmm. and writing columns um, for magazines yep. for many years. Cause I liked this idea of communicating that way but also when you interview other people right you learn yeah so when i'm interviewing the scientists or the doctor or the psychologist it's really just an excuse that i have to keep learning right and, and then you're sharing it with other people too yeah. because like that's the benefit they get to know too yeah and try to break it down also trying to take things that are maybe complex but make them as simple i always say like i try to listen like a third grader mm -hmm. on some of the stuff because i've been in this space for a long enough time okay that you go, hey, listen, you want this best information that is rooted in science and makes sense, but how do you make it make sense to somebody so they go, oh, that's why I'll do it. Right. And so- Because it's one thing to hear it, it's another thing to take action and be yeah. like, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna start doing this, this, this. Yes, and this is yeah. why. Right. Not like it sounded good, but I'm not sure. And so that, I like it and I like the learning and I, I've always liked the communicating. Um, and I also really actually enjoy when it's not about me. Mm -hmm. I've always felt that way, mm -hmm. even when I was competing. Um, I have that sometimes even with Laird's business where it's like, I'm happy to be behind. Behind the scenes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I just think it's another way to express myself. Yeah, and you've done such a wonderful job with it. And Gabby, you keep adding things to your plate. <laughs> I can't wait to see what is oh next God. for Gabby. And guys, no. what is up next now is the three minute play with DA. You guys love this segment. Rapid fire questions showing you more about your favorite athletes off the NFL football field, off the NBA basketball court, off the soccer field, outside of volleyball and modeling. So Gabby, you ready? Ready. All right. So we were talking about your husband, love him, got to meet him. Beautiful, gorgeous family. I'm going to do this twofold. Okay. What is the favorite af the favorite activity to do with the family inside, number mm -hmm. one, and mm -hmm. then favorite activity to do with the family outside? So I, inside mm -hmm. one, outside two. I mean, inside we sometimes play games, but it gets ugly, honestly. I think just, yeah, it's not good. Okay. Is break, <laughs> is honestly, we're like a break bread family. I okay. think just being together. And outside, it's usually around the water yeah, somehow. Surfing, it's, it's beaches, clear. it's like yeah. swimming. swimming. It's, you know, but we're also like all families. Like our kids are a little bit bigger now and they're like, oh, my parents, you know, right. so it's a yeah. little bit so of it's that. Like when you actually yes. reel them in, you're like, everybody's yes. home. Let's yes. do something. Let's, let's not romanticize it, shall we? But it's, right. um, I think it was, it's just going outside and, and being by the ocean and, and here if, cause you know, you don't want to end up in a brawl and cards being thrown. And right. People right. That keeps off. everybody some space and everyone's yeah, yeah. out can do their own yeah, thing. Yeah, for sure. All right, Gabby. Well, when I walked in, I see a lot of, and I'm not surprised about this, but what? I see a lot of healthy products. I see a powder. Oh, yeah. 
when I walked in, I was asked if I wanted kombucha. Oh, this yeah. is a healthy household, okay? <laughs> okay. What is Gabby's favorite healthy lunch? This could be something okay. that you whip up or you, you know, drive down Malibu into the city park mm -hmm. and buy something. What is a healthy Gabby Reese lunch? Honestly, for me, it's usually just veggies, and I probably would put more olive oil on it than you'd think. And if Like I cooking it or on top of it when it's done? Um, when it's done, Ooh. because the health of... A healthy fat because why we overeat because it cooks out it cooks out the right nutrients. just okay. a little just a little okay I'm and why go. we overeat a lot of times we don't have enough healthy fat okay okay and then um, maybe just a high quality side of protein but also I have I will admit I do like um, like last night I made a salad that had you know watermelon and feta so I mm. like cheeses and you know if you, mix it's of summer like, right okay. but I will I want to remind people if you, it, four oils, coconut, avocado, um, olive oil, and for some people they say for high heat, uh, Malaysian red palm. But Ooh, I don't even know what that avocado is. and coconut for cooler, not high heat, but for cooking, um, it's avocado, sorry, avocado and uh, red palm, and for dressings, it's olive oil and coconut, right? Okay. So if, wow. if you wanna talk about being healthy, what helps, what people talk about a lot is like, oh, I had salads. We just but like you, but you smothered ranch no, on your salad. No, but that's it. Right. It's the, and what oil? <laughs> right. Is it, is it vegetable? Right. Is it sunflower? Is it safflower? Right. So just remind people, like, just keep the oils really simple. Because a lot of times people are really trying hard. And they think they've done something, but then it's like, okay, look at your salad, though. Is it smothered with cheese? Is yeah. it ranch? Well, that's like, it. So I, I'll try to do the goat cheese instead of the cow like milk. Like shredded cheddar or something. Yeah. Well, it's just a lot of it's yeah. processed yeah. and there's real no nutrition in your body. It's just like a weird thing. Yeah, you're not getting any like value. It's just a taste. Right, but if I go to New York and like they had go, this is at Ray's Pizza and it's the best pizza in New York, guess what? But that's Eat more it. of a treat me kind of thing. That's not something no. Gabby's hitting pizza every night. It's no, like that's what New I York. mean. It's yeah. like there's eating, but I don't think anyone should feel like they're denying themselves. It's just I think when you eat kind of healthy enough long enough you feel so good that you can really tell the That's, difference my mom says the same thing my mom's a vegan she said the same thing no, like if something true. comes in she's like i don't feel well my kids are starting to experience that my older daughter my middle is 17 and she's already experienced that my 13 year old will be like weird like buy like get these cookies and like weird cookies like heavy duty and i watch her and she'll eat a couple and she'll be like oh and i'm like because That's what you get <laughs> no i just don't say, i just don't say anything because she's gonna figure it it's out it's got to be their experience yeah you know so i would say and also the only other thing i would tell people is like hey if you don't want to eat it just try not to have it in the house right and then you're not tempted to like go and get it because it's not even on the premises it. it's nowhere right because i would eat it let's say you're having a stressful day or like something's happening you just be like grab would whatever you grab like a snickers or something or like i would candy? be like a chip girl <laughs> okay. okay so like a lay's potato chip or something bad. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe there's healthier versions. Yeah, there's healthier. There's a Trader Joe's like wheat tortilla yeah. or whatever, like the more healthy versions. All right, Gabby, who okay. is your favorite musician or favorite band of all time? Well, you know, I grew up in the Caribbean uh -huh. listening a lot to Bob Marley, oh, quite reggae. frankly. Yeah. So I, I really um, have a deep, it brings me back to when the I- The Caribbean days. Yeah. So I really love Bob Marley quite a bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to say Bob Marley. All right, Gabby. Well, I want to ask you this. We talked a little bit about this earlier. We were talking about the Nike deal, mm -hmm. and people know Jane Kennedy's my idol. I met her on the NFL side. It's a good idol. Yeah, she's amazing. She was the original goddess of football, so no I kidding. love. She knows how I feel about her. But for you, when you really started to rise, mm -hmm. who did you look up to? Who was that athlete that you, could, you know what? Let's open it up to male or female. You could pick a male or female. Someone that you were like that person i really like what they're doing they're really blazing a good trail i would like to have similar qualities to them you know it's interesting i the first athletes i i noticed and it was really before i was in sports was cheryl miller and yeah. babe dietrichson zaharias yeah. okay? okay but once i got into sports i'll be honest one of the athletes that always intrigued me on the women's side was steffi graf oh my god because she was so good yes. and so elegant mm -hmm. and then it felt like she didn't really need the attention yeah so I was like always, you, similar. Well, yeah. well, as far as like being self-deprecating and just doing your craft and yeah. not really caring. But even on like a higher level, higher right? Because she was on a really big platform yeah. and she was winning all this prestige, you know, these prestigious tournaments. Yeah, yeah. So I was always watching her, um, and I actually interviewed Steffi many years ago, and I was always interested in like how it made me feel like everything she was doing was for her like yeah. the way she wanted to do to it, do that it she wasn't playing games and things like that. Right. So I really, 
I really paid attention to her. Yeah, she was really, really just, yeah. my dad is a big, I played tennis. I had a scholarship, a college scholarship for tennis. So when you said Steffi Graf, yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. my dad loves Steffi. She was just, she was an ace out there and she handled herself so well. That's it. And just, yeah. it was, there's not many athletes and also unfortunately or fortunately, whatever, it's just the nature of the beast. You kind of have to hustle to get attention. Yeah. But because she was in the one sport for women that if winning, if you kind of won, your sport was big enough to handle you being quiet, mm -hmm. um, it was cool. Yeah, and she did so well. Well, Gabby, people know I'm a glamorous person, but I also love chores, okay? I love oh, to do? do dishes, I love to yeah. do laundry. I offered to sweep, my camera guy, Alan, yep. tracked in some dirt and I was gonna sweep it. Glamorous Gabby Reese, mm -hmm. is there a chore, something that people may not like to do that you like to do around the house? Something that I guess stereotypically is considered a chore. Oh, I do everything you around like the house. Clean? I, I am a, cl I I am a cleaner. I, I don't clean. like, and I do it, but I don't like, I like to clean clothes. I do not like to fold clothes. Okay, so you get them through and then somebody else has to No, handle. I will do it, but if I can <laughs> pawn that off, I will. But okay. you, you like, both Laird and I are like, we just say like you come up from the rear. So it's just like continuously coming and keeping things organized and doing it. So really just not procrastinating. Right, and, right. And knowing too, like if you're busy, be like, okay, that can wait till tomorrow. Okay. I love Laird. I, I think he's an amazing guy. He's he's trying to get me back into surfing. I I surfed once and I failed. And as a college athlete, I thought I was going to be better at surfing. So I love Laird. So let's spotlight him. Mm -hmm. Date night with Laird. What is the dream date night? Let's go pre-COVID with Laird. What? Well, what? whatever it is, it better be early because Laird early goes. Early in the day. Well, oh. early in the evening, Laird goes to bed at like you know eight thirty. Why does Laird go to sleep at eight? Oh my gosh. How I'm gonna does, talk to him about how that. How does how is Laird? I don't even get tired until like midnight. Thank you. I know, but okay. you have to realize Laird is in, <laughs> Laird is in pursuit. So he's dedicated okay. to his family. We have he we have another business that's a food business, right? Oh, okay. What's the name of that business? Um, Laird Superfood. Oh yeah. Okay. Laird. And Superfood. then and so that takes time, whatever. Um, and then and his his mistress is surfing, and mm -hmm. and people don't realize like I I don't know <laughs> another athlete. His mistress is. Well, it is, is it. Um, that has been in pursuit of their sport as long as Laird yeah, has. Yeah, done a lot of good things. At the level. At the high level, And yeah. so the way that happens is I think you get to bed. Yeah. Quite frankly. So and when then you, you start early, and then your juices are flowing like 5, 6 a.m. When like you're recovering, the, recovery, also. Okay. And so you're not talking about a guy who's like, I played till I was 35, I played till I was 40. This is somebody who's in a lifetime pursuit of something. And he's still out here. He just showed me a picture. He's no, still it's, doing it. He's no, like, no I'm, I'm like... I, know. I can't <laughs> like believe it. Out. No, it's, it's, and the output, like the training and things, it's, um, it inspires me, but also it's like, I understand that as Laird's partner. So date night would be like a lot of very good, healthy food because yeah. Laird can eat a ton of food. We, okay. you know, I have, I don't know if you saw my dining room table. I have a very, I, did. I, like, I love, I love her house. Well, it's, it's long okay. and it's long because I think for us, one of the ultimate gifts in life is when you have like, we have a family actually staying with us from Hawaii right now. Um, this gentleman named Billy Kemper, who's a great big wave surfer. Yes, I've heard the name. And yes. he has two okay. really, his little kids and stuff. So last night, for example, we all gather. So Laird and I've been together long enough that date night is, uh, you get to sneak away and be alone. Just that time together. Oh. Mm no oh. like high f like the reason to be alone oh, the reason to be alone. <laughs> because <laughs> you, it, it's like it's like you know this whole like thing of like tell me what you're thinking like we're not doing that we we I, we know yeah, what each other we know what we're thinking so it's right like here. okay we're we, we the kids are one kid isn't here and not here and then okay work nobody has something so it's like okay go be together yeah and i think honestly if you said date date day or night it's, just, it's more like date in moments with you guys kind of like yeah and moment. just re reconnecting Connecting. always reconnecting because i think what happens is, is life does pull you in directions as a couple mm -hmm. and so how do you just find ways to be like just the couple mm -hmm. not the mom and the dad not the husband and just wife the romantic not the part. business just the couple right well you yeah. guys i noticed too laird he he when right before we we're about to sit down and film he was like kind of touching the small of your back like you yeah. need a little hug. it was just so it's like romance is alive and well <laughs> in the household here yeah. i felt it i just thought it was so sweet well we're both i think a little bit mean that it would be like why bother oh, no. if we're not gonna be that way with one another oh, okay okay do you know what i mean yeah, like okay. i think like, both wait. of us uh make it their, their own agenda not other another person saying mm -hmm. and um, i'm gonna be my best to make your life better and be kind and loving and hopefully you do the same and mm -hmm. i think that that 
it's also a little bit of like, um, you know, a checks and constant checks and balance where, where I think both, both of us have so much respect for each other and just another like, you know, kind of like, Oh, I'm not going to mess with that person. Right. That it actually makes everybody behave better. Amazing. Well, I definitely love your relationship. I'm so glad I got to experience the little tender And it's not perfect, today. by the of way. Of course, but, everything, but it's require, not perfect. everything requires work. Right, but I just, I can't, you know, I don't want to pretend like, oh, it's perfect and no. our family's perfect. I can't stand when people sell that because then everyone else is right. like, oh, oh okay. Right, of course. Everything's a work in progress. Yes, exactly. For sure, everything. Okay, Gabby, last two. Okay. I want to ask you about this. I saw this in People Magazine. Oh. People Magazine named you and other celebrities in yeah. Malibu as the Malibu mob. I don't know if you know about that, okay. but they call you John Cusack, John uh -huh. McEnroe, like the crew is mm -hmm. you guys, according to them, the mob. Okay. So oh. what do you, what's the favorite thing you like to do with the mob? Like when you're kicking it with John McEnroe, oh. you're kicking it with like, what do we do? What is the Malibu mob? What goes down on the Malibu mob front? It's not that sexy. Okay. And That's I, good. I want to find out and about I, it. I don't think it was that dangerous <laughs> okay. either. I don't know I, how they came up. Think, I'm like, when I saw that, I'm like, I, I don't think it's a the, mob, but okay. Yeah. The, it's, you know, sounds good. Um, <laughs> I, know. I think, you know, with the boys, it was, uh, the most dangerous thing that they used to all train together. So for example, mm -hmm. you know, other professional athletes in that group, they'd either mountain bike or mm -hmm. they spent a lot of time at the beach. And, um, there's sort of a lot of beach games competition going on oh, and out here. Okay. Y yeah. But it's like, you know, like beach, like bocce, bouton, oh, like yeah. this. Okay. And you think it's all these like chill people, but you know, like John McEnroe is John McEnroe. John McEnroe is John McEnroe and until the end. No, for real. For real? <laughs> like I've never, even I have a friend who. I love him though. No, I have a friend who went down to the, to the play. He was, Johnny was practicing at the Malibu, like at the racket club or something. Right. And so a good friend of his, that's a friend of mine. They're like, okay, just just like hit, you know, hit it to us to see like what it would be like tennis. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like McEnroe just can't do it. It's yeah. just like, it's just so competitive. Yeah. So I think with the Malibu mob, it was more like beach activities, probably a lot of trash talking, okay. but it was just a group that really congregates and, um, gets together it's and <laughs> yeah. And tries to like get some training in to support each other. Right. But then there's just a lot of like needling and hedging and you know, yeah, I could like see that. John McEnroe. I mean, this was the guy that would just like ask the umpire, are you sure about that call? Oh yeah. Like, is that how he did are you it? Freaking kidding me on yeah like, no it was he's entertainment though. he's I love... very competitive yeah so i mean and it's it's not like an act it's real yeah it's john it's... the john McEnroe you see yeah. is the john McEnroe oh he when is you get so when the competitive. cameras are off when he's off yeah. the court he's always john yeah. McEnroe 100 percent. yes he is it's great i love it gabby all right let's end on this you i what i love about what you're doing with your podcast and on your instagram is really educating a lot of people motivating life coaching inspiring let's give our top three Gabby Reese's top three keys to success. Let's bullet point them. Ooh. Gabby Reese, top three, one, two, three, keys to success. Okay. Being successful in your life, whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's being healthy, whether it's being a superstar athlete, whether it's being good at your job. Yep. I think to start is the reason I care about taking care of myself is because it just helps me deal with everything else. Yeah. So figure out a way realistically for you, how you want to eat, what things you like to move in which ways, not the way I tell you to, right. um, that you can keep up and do each day right. that turn you on, that feel that like work you. for you personally. Yes, okay. but find the real value in why it's important to take care of yourself. Because a lot of people think it's like something you have to fit in or get done. Mm -hmm. um, and then- Because that was one. So. And then the second is, I think that it's important that we find, we live the, our life that reflects who we genuinely are, right? So I think if I, if you ask me what is success, because success is different, right? It's not Jing and fame and whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, what's going to make you genuinely feel fulfilled and successful. And how do you want to pursue that? Because sometimes we have so much noise coming at us from the outside world and parents, like you should do this and you should right. do that. It's what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And what do you want to work hard at? And what do you want to keep showing up for? And then the last, thing is twofold, which is, um, I, I'm pretty sure there was a Harvard study that talks a lot about this and it, it's okay. not, it's not a random, it's you know, no, established. Okay. we, we need to be connected to people. It doesn't matter how big our lives are. If we don't have real relationships, um, it's usually not going to feel so, so feel no. so great. But then the conversely, the flip side of that is, um, from everything that it, it seems is I feel like when we are of service in certain ways, even if it's to our family or to the people at work, when we have elements of service in our life, 
there is such big um, meaning and purpose. Mm -hmm. Because I, I'm a big believer in striving and achieving, but it's like you don't want to just have all this stuff and forget some of these things along the way. Wonderful. Pearls of Wisdom from Gabby Reese. So many great things that we learned about her today. Gabby, I just want to thank you so much once again. Beautiful home in Malibu. We're thank so you. excited to be invited to hang out with you and Laird and just share this time with you. So I'm just so grateful for the opportunity and thank you so much. Well, thank you. And, and I would be remiss if I don't say this. One thing too that I think is helpful in life okay. is when you take total accountability. Yeah. So, because if you don't like the way something is, you just can change it yourself. Right, right. So you have I to just, be responsible for your own personal journey yeah, in life. And I think that's really helpful. Yeah, and I just want to say on a personal note, I mentioned this too, but Gabby's been an inspiration to me as someone that was a scholarship athlete that has modeled that has done television on the NFL sideline and NBC Olympics and all the stuff that I've done, looking at Gabby and seeing that you can look good, you can be presentable, you can be confident, you could do good in so many different areas at the same time. That was something that really inspired me on my hmm. journey. So thank you. I just want to thank you so much for that. And Gabby, anything else you want to shout out? I mean, we talked about no. high X training. No, I'm we just going to about... chill now. You can take over in the world. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take a nap. No, well, I, amazing. I think, you know, listen, we only have one life and yeah. so have some fun and do some stuff and, yeah. and, um, but it's your, you know, it's like you're, like you're doing your own unique thing. And mm -hmm. I think that's so important. Yeah. Well, I appreciate Congratulations. it. Congratulations. Oh my God, Gabby, thank you so much. Well, I appreciate you guys so much. I want to thank my audience. 9.9 .9 million total views. I started this a couple years ago coming from a national TV background. I wanted to interview people on my own and start my own lane. And you guys have supported me so much. Superstar athletes, David Beckham, Kawhi Leonard, Snoop Dogg, so many NFL players, Gabby Reese. So we just want to keep rising and we know we can't do that without you guys. So thank you guys so much. Love you guys. Shout out to my camera guy, Alan. And I also want to shout out Jen, who's part of Gabby's management team. She yes. has been a doll to work with as far as this interview and everything involved with it. She is just a top notch person. So I just want to personally thank Jen and thank you guys so much. Make sure you guys subscribe and I cannot wait, as you know, to see you next time.